Yo, so today I'm going to answer the question a lot of people have been asking, and that is, yo, Elliot, do you still practice bioenergetics? And if so, how do you work it into your daily practice? So uh, short answer, yes, I still practice bioenergetics on a daily basis. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. You ought to know that I've been practicing bioenergetics since 2011, and I learned it by studying under the practitioner Dr. Robert Glazier, who was a student of Alexander Lowen, who's a founder of bioenergetic analysis. So not only did I get four years of intense bioenergetic an uh, analysis and uh, training under Robert Glazier, but also studied all of Dr. Uh, Lowen, Alexander Lowen, MD's books. He's got over 12 books. You can see a bunch of them right back there. Um, I would encourage you to study Alexander Lowen if you're interested in the theory of bioenergetics because what I'm about to show you might seem a little crazy, might seem a little out there and a little woo-woo, uh, but this man was an MD and he was dedicated to bringing the idea that uh, the body and breath affect the mind into a scientific framework and he did the best that he could in the 1970s and 80s. Today there's a lot more research uh, around this topic of how the body and breathing affect the mind and how the mind affects the body and breathing. You can find most of that research done in the, the uh, realm of uh, trauma, trauma release therapy, trauma release exercises, post-traumatic stress syndrome stuff. Guys like Gaber Mate, uh, Peter Levine, and Robert Skayer would be great resources to begin. But today, I'm not going to go into the theory of bioenergetics. That's for you to study. Today, I'm going to simply answer the question, Elliot, how do you integrate bioenergetics into your daily routine? So I'm going to show you three very simple but very powerful exercises that if you do on a daily basis, you're going to experience a myriad of different benefits. So let's begin with what those benefits are. So benefit number one of practicing the exercises that I'm gonna show with you right now are deeper, more relaxed breathing. And so most people don't recognize that their breathing is shallow and tense because it's one of those things we become unconscious about it. We are literally breathing mechanisms. Our body is built in such a way that we are basically walking pumps. The heart is a pump, the lungs are a pump, and we're constantly, uh, in order to stay alive, there's a pulsation in the body. You see what I'm doing here? Almost like if you look at a jellyfish, there's a, there's a pulsation going on that keeps that thing smooth and cool and living its life without problems, dude. Uh, everything in nature has sort of a pulsation. Some scientists say that the whole universe is, is sort of pulsating that there's a frequency to the earth. You know, they call it the, the Schumann resonance, right? What is a resonance or what's a frequency? Something that pulsates, right? So our whole body, our heart, our lungs, our, our vessels, everything, every cell in the body is sort of doing this, right? Systole, diastole, inhale, exhale. And so you could just imagine that for, that for someone or an organism to be at its best, there's got to be a smooth flow. The best example would be, watch some videos of jellyfish, right? Jellyfish is just doing this. And it looks so graceful. The, I've seen videos of jellyfish that go to classical music, and they literally look like they're dancing, right? They're just doing this. Now imagine that that jellyfish had some sort of trauma. It could potentially happen. Anything that has a nervous system can be interrupted with a trauma. And so that jellyfish, as it was as it was expanding, right? Everything expands and contracts. That's what, a, that's what pulsation is. As it was expanding, it hiccuped and then contracted. So it did this. Or it had a, a big expansion but a short contraction and it stayed like this instead of a full. It would be performing way below its potential. It couldn't swim as fast. It just wouldn't be relaxed. You, as a pumping organism, must, and this is why heart disease is such an issue, because the, uh, once again, one of the primary pumps has hiccups. This is why people, you know, they, like a heart attack, like all of a sudden, what should be a nice, smooth pumping organism freaks out. Heart attack or all kinds of heart diseases, right? 
Well, it's the same thing with your lungs. The thing is with your lungs and your breathing is that not only is it happening on an unconscious level, like the heart, but it also, you also have conscious control over it. And so what I'm going to show you is how to break free of a lot of the, uh, the, the hiccups. Imagine that once again, imagine the jellyfish. You as a human being living, you know, seven to, you know, from age seven, that's like when most of the trauma starts manifesting itself, right? Four, five, six, seven years old for the rest of your life, pick up different hiccups based on experiences that you've had. Not all trauma means that bombs were blasting off in your ears. It could simply be like a teacher told you to shut up and sit down one day when you were trying to, you know, do something that you thought was good. Shut up, sit down, right? Your first grade teacher told you that and all of a sudden like, now you, now you got a hiccup in your throat, right? Where you have a hard time expressing yourself. You don't speak up because it was like that one time that happened and it got trapped in your nervous system. You basically remember it in an unconscious level. The unconscious resides in the body, by the way. The body is the unconscious. There's even a book called that, I think by Garber Mate, The Body is the Unconscious Mind, but you can go look this stuff up. Um, and so you have like, imagine that your body, just pretend for a moment like, was draped like a ghost, like in Pac-Man, right? And so you're sort of like a walking, or floating, walking uh, jellyfish. You could imagine that starting from the top down all the way to the bottom, there are segments that can hold tension based on the experience that you had or you like how you live your life, right? You could, a very good way to see the, how, how you know, normal this is, is if you sit all day, if you sit all day, you're gonna have tension in your hip flexors and that's gonna create tension in your pelvic floor, maybe a weakness in your pelvic floor, but then a sort of a flexion in your hip flexors because you're sitting all day long, right? People who have rounded backs, right? There's gonna be tension in the sternocleidoid mastoid, there's gonna be tension in the diaphragm, right? There's gonna be tension there just based on bad posture, bad habits, but also, based on psychological predispositions. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. I've already gone too far. But the bottom line is most of us don't have relaxed breathing. Bioenergetics will help you have relaxed breathing. Number two, less anxiety and stress. So a lot of times when people have anxiety or stress, they try to solve the problem at the level at which the problem's created. And that's in the mind. You can't think your way out of depression. You can't think your way out of anxiety. You can't think your way out of stress. All these, you know how you know this is true? Because all these things are experienced physically. The problem is what's happening in your body. And once again, if there's anxiety, there's a good chance that you don't have deep, relaxed breathing. If you're depressed, I mean, a lot of the studies that they've shown about depressed people is that they have shallow breathing. If you're stressed out, you probably have rapid, shallow breathing. Anxiety is rapid, shallow breathing. Depression is slow, shallow breathing. The bottom line is, your breathing is jacked up. And thus, if you fix your breathing with the exercises I'm going to show you now, you'll have less anxiety and you'll experience less stress. Doesn't mean that there won't be stressful situations in your life. You just won't react to them the same way because your breathing is relaxed. And then number three, which is like the ultimate benefit, right? Because we all want to become the strongest version of ourselves, right? So number one, deep, relaxed breathing is like, yeah, well, what does that mean? Okay, less of the bad stuff, anxiety and stress. But also what that means is more of the good stuff, more charisma. And when you think about that word charisma, you think of somebody who's like dynamically expressive and can share ideas with the snap of a finger, who knew, who's very witty and fun and is attractive to other people, charisma. And so you could just imagine that if you're free from anxiety, you're free from stress, you're free from neurotic holding patterns in these, these bands of tension that can manifest themselves throughout your whole body, you're gonna be free to express yourself. You're not gonna have anything holding you back. You're not gonna choke under pressure. You're not gonna be stifled. And so charisma is the perfect word, so much so that I love this word. I went and I looked up what the word charisma actually means. And you guys would be amazed at this. This is There's a spiritual component to the things that I'm sharing with you guys here. And I don't, again, I tend to go down rabbit holes, so I'm trying my best to stay focused here. But charisma in theology is, is divinely conferred gift or powers. How many of you believe you have a divinely conferred gift or power, right? We all have divinely in, uh, conferred gifts or powers, 
but they do not manifest themselves if you are locked up, if you're stuffed up, if you're stifled and you're not breathing, right? In the Bible, it says that God breathed twice. This happens numerous times, twice in particular, I thought of breathed into the clay to create Adam. We're literally dirt and breath. We are physical and spiritual. And so there's this divinely inspired, in, even think about that word inspire, right? The ap- opposite of inspire is expire. <sighs> Inhale, <sighs> inspire, right? And then the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ returned to, uh, you know, on, on the Pentecost and breathed into his, onto his disciples and said, <sighs> and he conferred the Holy Spirit upon them. So there's a Holy Spirit, there's a conferred breath that's associated with powers or gifts, right? A spiritual power or personal quality that gives an individual influence or authority over a large number of people. You could just imagine a charismatic person will lead a lot of people. The word charism is like a gift. And we have these divinely inspired or given gifts, conferred powers that are, that are meant for us to evangelize. In order to lead people back to Christ, if you will. So a lot of things I'm going to say right here, a lot of, I know a lot of Christians are like, oh, I think you're getting into occult stuff. I think a lot of that is just you guys are afraid, right? And I'm not saying, you know, Pentecostals got something going on too. And there's, there's a whole, there's a movement within uh, Catholicism uh, that's that is very much based on charisms, charisms, right? Um, I forget what they call themselves, but charismatics, charismatics, the charismatics, right? Charismatic movement. So charisma, and then a special divine office, function or position, so on and so forth. If you dig deep into this word charisma, you're going to see a lot of talk of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm not saying that if you do these exercises, you know, you're going to be, you know, you're, you're going to be like, uh, you know, infused with the Holy Spirit right away. Because if you're sinning and you're, you know, you're, you're engaged in vices, it ain't going to happen that easily. But the, the point is that breath, even the word breath, breath is spirit, pneuma, right? Where we get the word pneumonia, challenges with the breath. Okay, cool. So already spending too much time on this. So what do I do? So I'm going to share this video here with you guys. I'm just going to go back and forth. I recorded my entire or a segment of me actually going through this routine, but I'm going to be, start at the beginning here for you guys. So I will have you know that I begin my bioenergetic routine with prayer. And why I do that is because number one, I pray on my knees. I'm sitting all the way back on my heels here. This is, this is critical because it's about getting down into the, getting down into the feet. If you notice my feet are flexed here, uh, bending at the knees, the whole lower leg is being squashed by my upper body weight. And then I have this pillow here because sometimes I, I struggle with flexibility. So I'm building flexibility and I'm creating space by smashing my lower body, my, my knees. What does that do? It opens up and it frees blood flow to the lower, lower limbs, which generally end up very tense and tight because we walk on our legs all day long. Alexander Lowen says that most people walk on their legs, they don't walk with them. And a part of the reason why is because we, the, the legs are so stuffed up and stifled and rock solid. That's why people have like varicose veins and stuff like that or pooling in their legs. You see like old people sometimes, their legs get really like full of fluid. Well, that's because they, there's no pulsation down below. There's no movement down below. By getting on your knees on this pad, this is just like a little pad, I'm standing on it right now. Get down on your knees. This is what I do, you know, do whatever you want. Get down on your knees and pray. And so this begins the bioenergetic process because I'm starting to bring blood flow down to my feet while at the same time breathing in a rhythmical way with my prayer. And I'm not telling you to do this. You do whatever you want to do. But you'll notice here, I'm going to go right into the prayer. Uh, I just did the sign of the cross. Actually, I probably just finished here. But there I am. I'm doing it, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm doing here, you hear me mumbling? So this is bioenergetics. You could do it, you could take it, or you could leave it. But this is a this is turning this is taking my prayer and making it physical. This is something that a lot of Orthodox Christians do. A lot of Catholics who are in the know, they do this. Uh, Muslims get down on their knees and they pray every day. It's bioenergetic, meaning that it's physical prayer. 
They work together. And so not only am I opening up movement and pulsation into my lower leg, but I'm also praying the rosary. And so I pray the rosary in Latin because I find that the words roll off the tongue so much better. I know a lot of you guys, you know, I was once into the new age and stuff like that. A lot of you guys are probably still into new age stuff. And so, you know, you are where you are. But in, in, in a lot of new age philosophies, they use mantras, right? Om. Or like, you know, Buddhists make some like sort of like words. It's the power in what I'm about to share with you is less about the words being said and more about opening the throat and getting into a, re a rhythmical breathing pattern while vibrating, right? Because you, you have to vibrate. You have to move. Your, this is your, every sound you make is a vibration in your throat and vibrating your solar plexus or your diaphragm and the pelvic floor as well. Because if you like, I'm going to share with you in a moment when I pray the Ave Maria, I do it, you know, 50 times. I'm praying 50 Ave Marias in a single rosary, right? Every single one of these beads, these small beads represents an Ave Maria. I have it coordinated with my breathing. So it it's sort of a, it starts to build the pulsation for my my bow, which I'm going to show you next. Watch me here as I pray one Ave Maria and notice my breathing pattern. And before I go into this, I know there are going to be a lot of people that are upset with me. They're like, oh, Elliot, how are you turning a prayer into something, uh, something else? Well, it's like, listen, bro, prayer is, must be physical. If you, if you, if you read the, the, the uh, if you read the, the desert fathers or like the early church, like they prayed with their hands in the air. They prayed. David danced around while he was praying. Right. They would they would chastise the body. They would use the body for prayer. Think about like in the mass, we go, you know, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. As we play out a story that Christ teaches in the gospel about the publican who prays like this, he, he, he beats his chest as he's praying. Right. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. So it's physical. It's physical. And so using the prayer, using the prayer beads, using the rosary is also physical. And then praying out loud in the manner that I'm showing you not only brings joy to God's heart to see that his children are fulfilling their obligation to worship him. That's what we were made for. But also it confers charisma upon us in a physical way. So here's how I pray the Ave Marias. On an inhale. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc en ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc en ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in ora mortis nostra. Amen. So if you notice, I take an inhale on the first part, and then I'm breathing it all out as I do the first part of the prayer. Then I take a second inhale, and then breathing it out through the second part of the prayer. And so I, that allows me to get into a rhythmical breathing and pattern with the prayer. That's a repetitive prayer. And you pray it over and over and over again, and you start to build what? that pulsation, that pulsation in the body. And so moving on, after that, after that, I'll stand up, and from this position right here, I'm taking deep breaths in through my nose and filling my belly, my sides, and my back, pushing the pelvic floor. So I know you guys can't see it, but I'm expanding in this area here with each inhale. 
so I'm stretching the back of my legs. I may also try to straighten my legs a little bit and get a little bit more stretch in the hamstrings, letting the head completely relax. Each inhale, I'm expanding. Each exhale, letting it all out. And I will do 10 of those. 10 inhales and exhales. Then I'll come on up. I'll come up from there. Let's see if I can. Anyway, I wish I could time it right. But there I am looking at the camera. So what I'll do is I'll come up. Usually just normal, not looking at the camera, just trying to make sure the I'm, in this, I'm in the camera. But notice my hands are behind my head. I bent my knees. I open my mouth. And then I start breathing. And if you notice, my belly and my chest will expand. Now there's a lot going on. I'm gonna let this play out as I go through 10 breaths here. There's a lot going on here. Now I'm putting my body into a stress position by leaning back like this. I feel a lot of tension in my solar plexus and in my belly when I do this because I'm stretching it and then I'm trying to breathe into it. So what you may not notice, what, there it is right there, is I start shaking and vibrating. And all that shaking is, is my body trying to find a way around the blocks. There's, it, it, this, is not, this, this is not, you know, rocket science. It's hard enough to breathe in that, that stress position. It's hard to breathe like that. So if you just relax into the, into the stretch and breath, your body will start to move around a little bit, right? You'll shake a little bit. You might feel things doing this as your body tries to find the path of least resistance so that you can keep breathing through. And there I go, I'm going down into another 10 breaths. I like to lock my arms like that. I like to let my head hang. And so you'll see me there. Yep, so I'll do that for a little bit. I'm just showing different angles here from that. So here I am. And then obviously, you know, there's not much to it. It's just a 10 deep breaths. And then I go back and I do another... I do another 20. So here I am putting my hands behind my head. There are different variations of this, but I like hands behind the head. This time I'm going to do 20 breaths and you're going to notice a lot more shaking and movement in my body as I move on. The reason for the open mouth is because you, you, you're gonna have a hard time doing this regardless, but back of the throat, the back of the throat and the jaw have a tendency to hold a lot of tension and you'll choke. If you try to do this without opening your mouth and opening the back of your throat, you might find that you start choking. Here I go with the movement now, because it's starting to get difficult. You try to do 10 breaths like this, you're, it's gonna be tough. I'm doing 20 breaths here. And sometimes I build up to 50 Look at that. So I'm, sometimes I'm having to straighten my legs up a little bit. Sometimes I'm needing to come up a little bit. But the whole idea is, a, is just following the body. You don't want to force it. I'm not forcing the breath to happen. I'm not being uh, wild and crazy like I was when I was younger. And I try, to break through the, I try to break through the barriers when I was younger. I used to try to force my way through the blocks. But now what I do is I allow myself to relax around the block. See, I'll come up a little bit there. So I'm making it a little bit easier on myself. But at the same time, I'm finding that sweet spot between tension and relaxation. Some of the breaths will just be bigger than others. Some of them will be a little bit more shallow. Sometimes I'll start feeling tension in my hips and in my belly. Sometimes it's gonna be in my heart and in my throat or my solar plexus. You just gotta work with it. You just gotta stick with it. Look at that, look at that shaking going on right there. Totally unconscious, I'm allowing my body to do that because it, it's working something out. It's working some tension out. If you get deep into bioenergetic analysis, you'll start to find that these are neurotic holding patterns associated with traumas. I don't wanna go too far down that rabbit hole. Confuse you guys. It's just tension. It's tension that you're holding on to that's blocking you from the full expression of your strongest self.
good. And then I'm bending right over once again. And so you may be asking, you know, how many times should you do this? You know, if you're just starting out, you can start off with uh, the bend over, right? Where you're breathing into your belly, kind of shaking there, letting your head relax. You know, the leg, you might feel a little bit of vibration in your legs. Do that 10 breaths and then do 10 breaths of the bow. And if it's very difficult for you, you can modify it by bringing your hands down to your hips. If you find like it's too easy for you, which I don't know, man, it, 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 for, that means you've got other problems, legit. Like if it's too easy for you, that means that you have no tension in your body, um, which is like ha it happens. You can put your hands over your head. So 10 uh, bowing forward, 10 bow back. And you could do that, you know, two, three times if you want. Normally, like that's just what I'll do. Just normally I'll just do like uh, 10 of each. If I'm really wanting to push it, I'll do 20 of each. If I'm feeling real trippy one day, I might do 50 in a row. And so here you see me transitioning, right? So we started off on the knees. Oh, actually, I'm going to do another set here, but facing you. Started off on the knees. We get up from the knees. We do the bow. Then we lean back and do the bow. So I'm doing a couple more bows here for you. Let's see what it looks like from the front. Mm -hmm. A little bit of movement, very subtle. The movement is very subtle. You don't wanna be like jumping around, hopping around, acting crazy, like you may have seen me do in the past. That's a little too aggressive and unnecessary. It's not necessary. I found that you can get the same benefit with a consistent effort of doing just enough. See, instead of like, you know, when I was younger, I would jump and I'd shake and I'd pound my chest and I'd like, I would like abuse myself. I would do things to like, to, to really break up the tension. It's unnecessary. In fact, your body kind of fights back a little bit. I would do a lot of shouting, right? Where you don't need to do shouting. In order to open up the throat, you just need a lot of open mouth breathing or uh, humming. Look at that. Look at all that shaking. Look at all that vibrating happening in my belly and in my chest. That's all tension, fellas. There is, there's nothing mystical or magical or spiritual per se. It's literally my body re re reacting to the stress that I'm putting it under. It, this is better than yoga. This is better than Tai Chi. This is better than all these other exercises because it really exposes where the tension is. Maybe Iyengar yoga. But, you know, once again, that's, you know, up to you because a lot of people say yoga is demonic. I don't know, but just playing on the safe side, I do this instead. And you can call this whatever you want to, but all it is, all it is, fellas, is stretching and breathing. It's all I'm doing. There's nothing magical here. Stretch and breathe. Yeah, starting to get tougher. Notice I'm bending my knees a little bit, trying to find space. That's what you got to do. When it starts to get tough, you don't come up out of it. You try to find space. So I might come up a little bit, might bend my knees a little bit. I might have to stretch my hips a little bit, whatever it is. Look at that little shake right there. All unwinding. It's all unwinding and breaking up tension. That's all it is. So I can breathe deeper, so I have less anxiety, and so I can have more charisma. So let's move on. That's the bow. Now I'm going to move on to something else. Here you see me doing a, I could probably speed this up, playback speed. See me doing a, the breathing there. Shake it. And here I'm going to go. And when I'm done, this is the last thing I do. So I go from the knees to the bow and from the bow to shaking. And I'll show you how I do my shakes. I do two different kinds of shaking. So the first one is just a bounce. And notice my breathing, you can hear it. Move the head a little bit. What this does is a number of different things 
you just stretched and stressed yourself out. You know, doing the bow is very stressful. And by doing this, you sort of, you allow it to flow, right? It's like, it's like one is like breaking up the dam. And then this is like allowing the river to flow. Also, you know, scientifically, it, 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 they say that it, it removes toxins by stimulating lymph. The lymph nodes, right? That's why like rebounding, you ever see people, they do rebounder, any kind of uh, bouncing that promotes what? More pumping is going to get more pulsation in your body. Life is pulsation. Life is pulsation. Life is pulsation. And so all you're doing is what? I'm pulsating. I'm breathing and I'm shaking. All of life is pulsation. And so you have this here, very simple, very simple shake, just, just. Very lightly. We're not going crazy. We're not, you know, oh, he, how's he doing this shit? You don't need to do it. If you want to move the arms, you just do it very lightly like this. You don't need to shout. You just open up your throat and you can hum. It feels good. It feels good. All right. Should feel good. Shouldn't feel bad. And then after that, I do. So you see, I'm moving my arms a little bit. Start going side to side. And you want to do some twisting. So this will, I'm going to speed it up. It's going to look funny. But this I'll turn into twisting. That's Elliot twisting on two speed. Notice I'm shifting from leg to leg. Shifting from side to side. Just twisting. I feel all kind of popping and cracking in my back. All kind of popping and cracking in my hip, right? If you don't move this way, a lot of us, like we're in the gym and everything that we do is very rigid. Things that we do in the gym is very stiff and linear. By doing these shakes and these twists and, and stuff, you're, you're subjecting your body to nonlinear movement patterns that opens up uh, you to a whole new world of, of movement and freedom. And so uh, what you get there, deeper breathing, more charisma. So that's it. That's all. That's a quick walkthrough. Uh, you know, maybe one day I'll create an advanced where I'll show you, you know, I can spend up to an hour doing this. There are uh, different movements that I'll use to create freedom in all the different um, bands of, of, of tension that Lowen talks about. But um, this here, you can, you can go real far just doing the bow and shake, bow and shake, bow and shake. You don't need anything else. This completely, in my opinion, replaces my old bioenergetic warm-up routine that I used to do when I used to show you guys back in 2013 and stuff on my Strength Camp YouTube channel. This one is just as powerful. Big difference here is I, you didn't hear me making a lot of noise, but you saw me doing it here. You, could br you can bring sound into it. The prayer brings sound into it. Right, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. And of course, I'm meditating on the mysteries of the life and death of Christ. If I, you know, if y'all didn't know that, that's what the rosary is all about. So that's it. That's all. A lot there to bite off and chew. I hope that was helpful for you. Talk soon. Done.